The humanistic theory has major players that uh, really impact the landscape of uh, the understanding of how people are well. Abraham Maslow and Carl Rogers are two uh, psychologists that uh, focused on uh, a third force in psychology, uh, and that is the humanistic perspective. And they really wanted to focus on healthy people and learned about how uh, we, uh, as uh, human beings, can support and nurture conditions for healthy personal growth. Uh, the major themes in Maslow and Rogers' work are that people are basically good and that humans strive towards the concept of self-actualization, which is morality, creativity, spontaneity. We want to be problem-solving and we want to have lack of prejudice and we want to have uh, and be accepted. And that's what people uh, want and we work our whole lives to get there. Humanistic uh, therapies uh, really convey empathy and unconditional positive regard and have very minimal therapist interpretation. Uh, 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 however, the problem again is that there is no strong evidence that humanistic therapies actually work in treating mental health issues or abnormal behavior. The behavioral model is derived from a scientific approach to the study of psychopathology. Classical conditioning, as explored by Pavlov and Watson, really formed the basis of the behavioral model. And I've placed a couple of YouTube videos in our Blackboard shell to help you learn a little bit more about Pavlov and Watson's work. But essentially, Pavlov and Watson looked at a contingency between neutral and unconditioned stimuli. And conditioning was extended to the acquisition of fears. The beginnings of behavior therapy challenged psychoanalysis and non-scientific approaches. And the early pioneers, such as Joseph, Joseph Wolpe, who discovered uh, systematic desensitization and opera conditioning done by Thorndike and Skinner, really helped understand how behavior therapy can help uh, individuals uh, both learn and uh, acquire various fears and behaviors. Basically, behavior is voluntary and is controlled by consequences. Although there are many advantages to all of the other types of treatments and uh, that we've described, learning traditions began to influence the development of behavior therapy. Behavior therapy becomes more favorable to the treatment of mental illness because behavior therapy tends to be time limited and very direct. And there is strong evidence supporting the efficacy of behavior therapies in our research uh, literature. So where are we at present? At present, we understand psychopathology as an integrative approach. This is an approach that is multi-determined. We don't look at a unidimensional account to psychopathology because this is not complete. We must consider the, what we call the reciprocal relationships between the biological, psychological, social, and experiential factors. We want to look at what's happening in the brain chemicals, what's happening in the person's thinking, what's happening for the person in their social and experiential life context. And these things, these reciprocal things, the relationships between each, define what it is that is an abnormal behavior. This is complex, multifaceted, and has evolved over time. As I described to you, the supernatural tradition is an early thinking and is, there's no place for this in abnormal behavior.